Hey everyone, welcome back. So I shared this um, screenshot of a mock-up of how we might leverage Google Slides to create a really structured kind of reading experience for students in a remote or an online environment. So the screenshot drew a bit of interest, so I thought I'd make a whole kind of walkthrough of how I set this thing up, how I built this activity, and then maybe even kind of set you up with the possibility to create this sort of thing on your own. So let me just get out of the way over here. So as you can see, I'm in Google Slides right here. This is the pre-built slide, but I'll build the whole thing from scratch again. So for example, if my students in my history class are reading letter from a Birmingham jail, like it's a really dense reading, some really complex ideas, nuanced arguments, and I might wanna break it down into a smaller kind of chunked experience. So there's a PDF of the reading that I have access to. So here's a PDF of letter from a Birmingham jail. And I might identify that I want my kids to just focus on the first four paragraphs or so for part one. So there's a little screenshot and I'll show you how to do that process. Now what I've also done over here is I have a little inserted video. And the reason why I inserted the video is I might kind of determine as the, as the teacher in this class that I need to be really close to that concept or that reading. So I might introduce the reading, clarify some of the arguments that Dr. King is going to make, maybe clarify some vocabulary, or even give the kids a, a kind of a frame or a reference or a context for what I want them to be thinking about as they're working through that reading. So part one up here would be to engage with the video. That's my front facing video and I'll show you how to do that. Part two, work through the reading on your own. Part three, drop in a little reflection. So I have a thinking routine from project zero of connect, extend challenge. And I highly recommend those thinking routines as well. So then we would move on to part two and then part three. And then what's really interesting about part three, you can see I have a link here to a Google form. So if I were to use something like Google Classroom or Schoology or Canvas to make a duplicate copy of this reading activity for all of my students, I might not want to jump into each one of their slides on slide two to check out their thinking routine. I might want all the responses to get curated in a Google form. But that could also be a link to a Flipgrid video question or a synth audio question, for example. So with that, let's start building live right now and kind of mocking this up so you can see it happen from scratch. So I'm going to jump back to this PDF and I'm going to grab a screenshot of this first segment that I want them to read. Now on my MacBook, it's Command Shift 4. On your device, it might be a little bit different for how you take screenshots. So there's my screenshot. I'm going to jump back to my slides and just drag that screenshot in. Now I'm really particular about how I make my screenshots look. I'm going to mask this with like a kind of rounded corner shape, stretch the corners a bit. I'm going to give it a little bit of border weight so it kind of pops out like gray. I might even go to format options for that image and give it a bit of a drop shadow just to kind of make it look a little bit more, a little bit nicer in the slides. So now what I also want to have is a little video of me right here. And to do that, I use a really helpful Chrome, uh, Google Chrome extension called Record to Slides. And that's what I'm going to demo right now. So if I want to be there in the corner, I'm going to run Record to Slides. It's right here. There's that little video icon that pops up because I have Record to Slides installed. So I'll tap on Record to Slides. Now this looks a little bit odd with two videos, but there's my front facing video. I will say anyone has access to watch this and I'll hit record. So welcome everyone to your first uh, independent reading exercise where you're going to explore Letter from a Birmingham Jail in our U.S. History course. So this is kind of a seminal document that we're going to read. It was a letter written by Dr. Martin Luther King. So I'll go on and on and explain and get them ready for a little bit of background, a little bit of context, and ready to read that segment. So I'll say when you're done watching my video, move over to part two to read that segment. When you're done exploring that segment, work below in your color-coded workspace to work on your thinking routine. So good luck, and I can't wait to see you in our next live call. So there's my video. I'll hit OK. Now, with my hands totally off of my laptop, that video is processing, going up to Google Drive, and it's going to drop onto my slides. So if you'll notice, the other thing that I did was add in these little numbered workspaces. Like, no problem. I want to make really clear kind of a guided experience for my students so they can work through this independently, feel confident, and know exactly what they should do step by step. So here's my video. It's going to drop this down here a little bit. Again, I'm really particular about how my stuff looks. So I'll add some border weight. I'll even make that pop with like a blue color to make it kind of stand out a little bit. 
And now let's add our numbered kind of identification of where you're going to work. I'll go to the shape tool, drop in a circle shape, right? So I'll drop this shape only in here once, then I don't have to do it ever again. I'll make the border kind of dark gray, fill the interior with that same blue. I'll put a one in here as their starting point. I'm gonna make that bold and white so it kind of pops out inside that blue background, make it a little bit bigger. And then of course I have to pick my go-to font is Oswald and let me just center that. So that's kind of stage one. Now I don't wanna build that over and over so I'll just copy and paste and bring this over here where they can now work on kind of part two which is to explore the reading. And then when we're done doing the reading, I'll make kind of part three in the process right over here. Just kind of get that aligned with the one. This will be part three in the process, right? And then I need to build in that workspace. So I'll go with the text tool and I'm just gonna drop in this text workspace for kids to work. And again, I might make this kind of look a really certain way if I want it to have this physical appearance the way that I'd prefer. So hold on one second here. So I'll add a little bit of border weight just so that pops out a bit, make it kind of a gray color. I might even bucket fill that. Like you can use color coding strategies like red means stop and work. So that can be a clear indication to the student. And this is where we could put um, the prompt, the thinking routine, right? Whatever you wanted to put here for your students. Now, if you also wanted them to be able to kind of mark up the reading, here's another interesting approach. I'm going to add a shape right now. So I have this kind of semi-rounded shape. And I'm gonna drop this on top of the reading, maybe indicating like two lines worth of content, for example. What I'm gonna do with that shape is go to my bucket fill, make it red, go back to the bucket fill, go to custom on the bottom, and make that about like 75% transparent. I'm gonna add a little bit of border weight, I like using like a dark gray. So now I've made the uh, kind of like a clickable, movable, semi-transparent shape that students could use to mark this up, right? So what I might do here as well is we're gonna crop this to only be like the first three paragraphs. And then I'll give them these semi-transparent shapes down below and I'll show you what we can do with these now. If I give these to the students ahead of time, right? And I, in the video, I walk through the process. I can have them take the shape, drag this on top of the reading. So there, that portion of the reading is highlighted. And what's nice about these shapes is now that can be the anchor for a comment in the margin. So you can sh the students can demonstrate the really close reading of the content. So we'll do insert, and this was what the student could do. Insert, comment, and here is student ideas. So now you can see what they're marking up, how they're engaged with that reading. And that's all just a screenshot, semi-transparent text boxes, kind of numbered navigation, teacher video supporting their experience and a space to do their final reflection. So that's the whole bit. Now, what I've done here is I made page two and page three, but I showed you that whole kind of building process in this live demo right here. Now, if the slides, say the reading was multiple pages like this reading, and I might want students to engage with it over multiple days, what I've also done up here, if you'll notice, I added a little red color coded bar across the bottom. So having like this color coding scheme, and you might be able to tell your students like, hey, work on the red content, which is only the first three slides for Monday and Tuesday. And then maybe we add, I'll show you how we can do this process. This is just a, a rectangle shape. And I'll add that to the bottom of this slide, but I might bucket fill that one like a dark blue because we might work on the blue content on Wednesday and Thursday. So having these kind of color coded, clear navigation, um, kind of predetermined workspaces can be really helpful. So I hope this process helped a demo of making a close reading, really structured experience in Google Slides with video using record to slides pre-set up workspaces, and even kind of these draggable highlighters to have kind of thoughtful reflection and comments in the margin. So good luck. I hope this video tutorial helped you with this whole process, giving you a new vision about and perspective on how you might leverage Google Slides, especially in a remote learning environment. So don't forget to subscribe. I'll keep cranking out these videos as often as I can to help everyone as they're navigating this new space. So thanks, and I hope to see you again in the next video.